Dreamcatchers, welcome to another exciting day in the Writer's Haven. I am your host, V. Helena, and again, I did not disappoint in bringing in a heavy hitter to the studio today. Many of you know him as an award-winning pianist and entrepreneur who has dazzled us in song and recently in libation when he introduced his collection of flow wines. As if that wasn't enough, this overachiever has added yet another inspiring accomplishment to his repertoire, that of author. He recently released a book entitled Flow for the Love of. Please join me in welcoming musician, entrepreneur, and self-empowerment advocate, Marcus Johnson. Hello, Marcus. How you doing? So good to have you in the Writer's Haven, finally. Good to be here. <laughs> well, I want to start to just talk a little bit. We're going to talk about a lot of things tonight, but I want to start off with the book and why was it important to you to write it? For so many reasons. Number one, uh, I have a new five-year-old. And uh, before she was born, I was doing a lot of traveling, and I started journaling things. Um, I was in St. Thomas. I had a hotel that was just destroyed, you know, by uh, by Irma, and um, I, I was looking out over St. John, and was like, you know, this is how you need to live your life. Writing some notes to my daughter before you get here. I'm already thinking about you. I already love you, and that turned into um, just a need to kind of leave some of what I've learned behind. As a professor, also, uh, and I speak from the stage, and I call it my keyboard pulpit. And you know that the whole idea there is using your platform to engage people and challenge them to shake up their inner passion. Everything's already there. You were born with it. You were, you know, the energy was there before you actually were born. But you know, it gets to a point where. Who's going to help you unlock it? And there's so many things that are telling you to live society versus living life. Mm -hmm. And I would leave uh, different functions and, and colleges and universities, and people would always say, is that written down somewhere? And I was like, it's not. So one day on a plane, I was coming back from San Francisco from Napa and at my computer, and I was like, I wonder how much I could write between now and the five hours it takes to get back to D.C. And I got through two chapters. And um, I just, over a series of about uh, six to eight months, um, put the book down and just started telling the story of how I transcended all of the obstacles that came you know, in front of me. And you know, with tips in the back of each chapter, how you might want to think about understanding that you will have obstacles. It's, it's how you. Uh, manifest a plan and execute it to get around the obstacles. It's okay to get, you know, as they say, it's okay to go through hell, just don't get stuck. Okay, now in the book you mentioned that you've been writing this book all your life. Mm -hmm. So the lessons, and I call them lessons, is that That's perfect. what you refer to yes. in the book? Um, so for there's 14 of them, and for each one um, you've taken some lesson or some life experience and you basically because I think your storytelling style is unique um, in writing this book, this type of book. Um, so you, you take the lesson, you think about the life experience, and then you just meld the two or three elements together. Um, what are some of the life experiences um, that, l talking about the 14, which one of them or what handful of them would you say are the most significant for you? You know, to tell you the truth, these 14, I would argue that they're all significant. Um, you can take, you know, we're, we're taping on the eve of the anniversary of my father's passing. Mm -hmm. And I lost him two years ago. And my dad is my best friend, always has been my best friend. And um, there's a chapter that is, you know, that deals with for the love of crying. Mm -hmm. Very significant, especially as an African American male who is supposed to be, you know, at the top of his game. You know, it's like, you know, don't don't let the what you see fool you. You can have a negative bank account. You can uh, uh, you you can look like you're winning in the world. You can be behind on loans. 
you know, you can look at like you're on top of the world. You can have, you know, the wonder child having a kid out of wedlock, you know, not being with my child's mother. Um, and, you know, these are the things that I was never supposed to do, yet they happen. Mm -hmm. And not happen, I did them, you know, and I'm, I'm at the I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for them. And having a, a moment of all this going on while I'm thinking about my father, you know, developing a neurological condition and then dying, um, it was a traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. So, you know, learning that, it's talking about the, the fact that it is okay for a grown brother, you know, who's supposed to be at the top of his game to sit down on a couch, watching a movie like an officer and a gentleman, turning the TV off and then letting it go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you look at the rainstorms, you know, as I talk about the thunderstorms and how we've had these very serious hurricanes lately, they're a form of release for the planet. Mm -hmm. And they're a sign of something else. But if you use them as God intended, our, our rainstorms, our cry storms, they're very cleansing in a way. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, whether it's positive crying, because I, you know, I have a video that I watch with my daughter singing, you know, It's My Time from Elena at Avalor, uh, Disney character. I watch her running around my kitchen on my phone, and it makes me tear up. And that's not a bad thing, it's just the fact that I love that child so much that to see her having fun with, you know, Isabel and Elena running around my kitchen doing her thing, that brings, you know, a, another type of joy mm -hmm. that, you know, wells up and you can let it, you know, release and, and show. Um, and and it, it lets you see how human you are. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, for the love of dreaming and the concept that most of us live somebody else's dream. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's our mothers, our fathers, our significant others, our kids, you know, society. My, my quote is, you know, we all live society and we don't live life. So when you first start off in the world and when you first start off figuring out what you are going to change in your life paradigm, it has to start off with you taking time to figure out who you are and what you want. It's for the love of, of dreaming, mm -hmm. which ties directly in with for the love of thyself. Are you taking the time? Are you getting rest? Somebody came to me the other day, oh, I saw your pictures. It's great you got a vacation. I didn't get anything, but I took one. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, just like you budget money, you have to budget your time, use your calendar. You know, we have all these resources, and the only thing that we have to really recognize is that if we take the authority that God gave us by waking us, you know, awakening us this morning, um, then everything else really is ours to mold. It, we can mold it into to whatever we want to. Life is, is there just, you know, I was talking backstage, life is there for the molding, if you dare to do it. But if you don't, it'll give you that too. Life will give you whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're asking for the right thing. And then for the love of focus, um, I, I challenge you, or the reader, to think about, you know, people, uh, uh, I think I referenced Gary Keller, uh, the founder of Keller Williams Agency Real Estate, and how he has a book, The One Thing, and he talks about focus. And if you're, not, if you're focusing on one thing, you can't focus on another, you know, and you just have to focus. And having a unique experience as an African American in the United States of America, or just exi in existence, you know, I say that African Americans really don't have the luxury of focus. And so you have the focus of the cell phone, and then you have the focus of the Hubble telescope. Where do you fall? Which one is more significant? You have more pictures coming out than ever before, gigabytes and gigabytes and gigabytes of information every second going up online from a small cell phone. But the Hubble telescope can take a picture of an entire you know, part of the universe. Mm -hmm. Which one is more impactful? And yet, it's your scope of focus. Right. So yeah, there's the big focus of how I fit everything into my larger dream, but then I can separate it up into these tiny units of my micro focus, but understanding that that is in and of itself something that's necessary to for the love of relationships and the idea that between ourselves and spirituality and our significant others, you have to have aligned values. Mm -hmm. You have to have consideration and you have to have communication. Whether you're looking in the mirror at yourself whether you're kneeling down and talking to your higher power, 
whether you are conversing back and forth with business partners and like I was just on a, a email uh, chain with uh, our production partner in Sonoma, California, you know, in Marin County. I mean, these are things where, you know, communication. I'm considerate of your thought about our inventory. Let me see what I can do because our line goal is to sell this product. Mm -hmm. You know, sweetie, we're going to take a vacation and I need to see you this evening because I haven't seen you for a couple of days because I've been working. I want you to know that I miss you but have been considerate of the things that you have to do in your life. But today, I kind of need to, I need a hug, mm -hmm. you know, and communicating that in relationships. So, I mean, you know, you go down for the love of uh, uh, health and, and wellness, for the love of being stuck, you know? Sometimes it's okay to just be stuck. Pause. I'm, I'm taking break off. Yeah. I'll get out of it tomorrow. And then, you know, lastly, uh, but one of the chapters in the middle of the book, or two of them, one for the love of excellence and for the love of thanks. And the whole idea that most of us pray pe prayers of petition. Dear Lord, I, I, I want you to give me this. I can't wait for you to give me this. When you make me, when you give me this, I'll be whole. When you give me someone to love, when you give me a good woman, when you give me a good man. Those of us that are really successful and happy, we pray prayers of thanks. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for the fact that my heart beats. Thank you for my lungs breathing and my eyes seeing and my ears hearing and my fingers touching and the fact that I have some clothes and can come and talk on an interview about my book, which hopefully helps other people. Mm -hmm. That my daughter is being taken care of by my you know, stepmom and, and, and my sister. Thank you for money to be able to go to Giant when she asked me to make her dinner tonight and spaghetti, that I was able to go and know how to go and get ground turkey and spaghetti and Riles tomato sauce, tomato basil, because that's her favorite, and some bread so we can make our own garlic bread. Thank you for those things. Because when you have prayers of thanks and when you're actually thankful, that in and of itself empowers everything. Because you're not wishing for, you, you, you're already fulfilled. Mm -hmm you know that you have been blessed. Then you go out and you take what you need to take as it relates to molding the world in the form of your dream. What I, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just basically did a summary of your entire book. I don't have to ask any more um, concentrated questions about that. But one question I do have for the reader, does the reader have to have uh, some level of self in order to really connect with the book? I mean, you, you do a very, very great job of um, explaining the lessons and how they have manifested themselves in your own life. Um, and then <coughs> I would venture to say that there's some roomy in there. There's some, uh, the four agreements, mm -hmm. um, you know, all of those great thinkers and ideologies that also come through in your writing. And so, but at the same time, it's at a level that I think a person would be able to connect. But I just wonder, do they have to have a certain level of self-awareness, uh, a certain level of being in order to truly get the, the message? I, 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 I think they do. And I have been in some classic arguments among a couple of different board of directors and uh, that, are, that are to help people, we'll call it there. We'll stop mm -hmm. it there. And I've been in arguments with, with people to explain to them that I can't help poor people with what I've been given with my gift, but I can help broke people. Broke is a state of being. Poor is a state of mind. There aren't many people that are out there really helping broke people the ones that have gone to school, that are motivated, that fell on bad times, that need guidance to get where they need to get to understand that they're not alone because they've never been taught that they're not alone. They think that they're alone. They think it's all about them, but we're all connected. You know, you can go to Walsh and the whole idea of, of uh, conversations with God and that, you know, the idea of the world is that we're separate. But when we actually, when you go to the ancient, you know, whether it's Mali, Songhai, Ghana, the ancient, you know, Native American and Asiatic tribes, they understood that we were connected to the planet, mm -hmm. which is why you don't, you know, murder the planet or you end up murdering yourself. And by the right. way, Earth's been here a long time. The Earth is going to win. Right. You know, you talk about cleansing, and I hate to, to, to use these examples, but when you look at Puerto Rico and the houses that have been destroyed, mm -hmm. 
you have to ask yourself, is the earth trying to cleanse itself? It's like it tried to wipe the things off that island. And same thing in, in Florida and, and Key West and everything else like that, the earthquakes. What are we doing to, to our host? It's just like there, you know, if there's a little gnat, you know, I'm, I'm swatting away, right, you know, right. just, it, you know, and it's like, what if you, if you antagonize the host, I'm going to figure out, it may not be in the terms that you think, but I'm going to figure out a way to win. And by the way, you need me mm -hmm. much more than I need you. The, the earth existed a long time before that, right? So just bringing it back around, you have to have a sense of understanding that we are all connected. You have to have a sense of an understanding that you are not a victim in your life. That's really the self that, that you need to have to pick up and understand my book. Because if not, you can look at it and say, oh, well, you know, what are his stories? He's arrogant and this, that, and the other. And, you know, well, I don't care. You know, I don't know about Georgetown Law School and this, that, and the other, or, but, you know, starting this company and, well, you lost things and, and yeah, that means I'm human. But when you come from a perspective where you understand that we're part of something bigger and that the collective is just, you know, each one help one, but you are not a victim, an innocent bystander in your own life, or you no longer want to be one, that's where you come to me. And there are many other books that can get you to, to, to where you, you, know, you can pick this up. Mm -hmm. But my stuff is really for people that are motivated and looking for their own inspiration. That's where the tips in the back of each chapter come from because it's mm -hmm. just like, okay, that's how I did it. Here's some tips that you may want to think of. And by the way, you can do your own thing here. I'm just giving you a guideline. I'm, in the introduction of the book, it talks about, I just want this to be a conversation starter. Mm -hmm. You read this book as a whole, but then you come back and I need to think about excellence today. Right. I need to think about purpose today. I'm lo I've lost my purpose. You know what? I've gained 20 pounds. What he, he said something about taking one step today and two tomorrow and four the next day mm -hmm. and 16 and 32 and 64. Before you know it, you're running two miles. And it, by the way, if you do that every day, then you're losing weight and you're drinking water, you're taking care of it. But it's a plan. I'm not asking you to go jump and do a marathon. Everything has its place and it's a process. Mm -hmm. But you gotta come ready. Can't go to the gym expecting, you know, to get a beach body and you're unmotivated. Right, right. And so that's the crux of your book. It's it's a book of motivation and self empowerment. Mm -hmm. And when did you start this journey? The uh, January of 2015. Okay. Uh, and I, I laugh because again, I lost my dad September 28th of 2015, and that that was a there was a hole in my soul for a little while. I couldn't write. You know, I was just like, um, there's a hole in my soul, mm -hmm. and so I took a little time off, finished a little bit more, and then went to uh, um, Naren. Ariel at, um, at Mascot Books, and I just found him online with a friend. I was like, I need help, a ghostwriter to help me finish it. Mm -hmm. And um, actually what ended up happening was my uh, editor cut it down, and then we built it back up to, you know, where it is right now, about 170 pages. Mm -hmm. And then luckily, you know, I was very lucky and blessed to have Sheila Johnson to do a forward on it. So mm -hmm. No yeah. relation? No, no relation. Okay. Now, um... Speaking of the writing of the book, and it sounds like it took you maybe a year mm -hmm. to write it, what was your process? I'm assuming it's not anything like how you would write music. It's a, or is it? Um, I actually, you know, because music is a creative, is a creative process. So while I may sit down and say, I'm gonna start with this chord, I'm trying to build something that is new. This is more historical, yet share a sharing of wisdom. So all I really had to do was get quiet. And no better place than 37,000 feet above the earth going 500 miles an hour where nothing can reach me. Mm -hmm. So it was very easy to, to write with all the traveling that I was doing in 2015. 
and uh, the beginning of 2016. And I was in a good place. I had a, a really nice condo. Um, I turned off my phone. Um, and it was a, it had a loft and sunlight and the sun would, the sun was to the south. So I got sunlight all day up until maybe around seven o'clock in the evening, mm -hmm. even in the, um, uh, well, say fall. Uh, but once it got dark, I, you know, I got most of mm -hmm. the day when mm -hmm. it got to that, that quadrant of the sky. But, um, I would turn off everything, kind of disconnect from everyone and I just would write. And you know, I would just think of my different stories. I mean, and when you think about our tradition in the African-American community, the African tradition, Native American traditions, and the like, um, you have, you know, it, it, it's the reflective experience or the experience that is reflected upon. That's where wisdom comes. And when you look at it, I tell what I did, and there was, there were some very courageous things that, you know, I did like how I got into Georgetown and, and the law school, you know, um, um, but you, when you look back on it saying, this is how I was able to do that. This is the underlying reason, you know, one of my biggest blessings being born of my two parents, growing up in an entrepreneurial, I'm not taking any BS, you're going to be the best of the best. You know, I didn't need Harvard or Georgetown or, or Cornell or, you know, you know, speaking and going to those places or Howard to tell me that I was the best of the best. I've been told that my entire life. Mm -hmm. So when you're told that your entire life, you just go out there, you make it happen. But you still get your butt kicked. You still get your bumps and bruises. And there's nothing wrong with being transparent and telling that story so that others know. Because that's how I made it through. My dad, he would tell me these things is going back to the book. I mean, mm -hmm. I can think of two lessons already mm -hmm. just in that story of, of that decision. Let's talk about your flow brands. Mm -hmm. So when did you create this company and the, uh, it's a combination of your music, the publishing, I think, and also the wine, mm -hmm. and also the self-empowerment, the, the book, mm -hmm. as well speaking. as, yeah, and the speaking. So. Let's talk a little bit about that. You know, um, I started Flow based on a bunch of different things. Um, I really watched the music industry changing. And one of the things I was always intrigued by was Compass Music uh, Lifestyles kiosk at Target. Mm. So there was a music section and then by the card section there was a kiosk of like George Winston, you know, the lounge music, CDs, jazz for a rainy day. I was always intrigued by that. And in my studies of business development, when I was building, you know, the, the business plan for Three Keys, I found that, you know, people that are, you know, up to 30 describe things in terms of being hot. Like, that's a hot beat, that's a hot track, hot chick, hot dude, whatever. Mm -hmm. 30 to about 54 describe things as functional that works with this, pairs well with that. Once you get to 55 and above and you get to the twilight, now it's getting a little bit older, you know, it becomes, it's a spiritual thing. So um, I was sitting one day, you know, I had watched checks go from six figures a month to five figures a month. And I'm like, what am I gonna do? And I sat down and we had this brand called For Lovers Only, but I knew I couldn't scale that. And again, flow for lovers only. Mm -hmm. And we had the acronym, and I was like, what would work? What would work? And I sat in my office, and it hit me, you know, for love of. And I was like, well, it's for love of. I can put the the in there because I want to, and it's my idea. So I did, right? Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of the flow series. So the flow music series, flow chill, flow romance, and flow standards was the only time that a company has put out three CDs at the same time, an independent company, at the same time under the same brand, and they all um, debuted in the top 15 of Billboard. I appreciate your response to it. My question was a lot deeper, and unfortunately, we don't have time to get to that. However, we must have you back okay. to talk more about the tenements of the book, mm -hmm. you know, and, and really laser focus on some things that um, we as 
African Americans and challenges that we face, um, going back to what you said about um, just the, there's what you present and then there's what comes back. Mm -hmm. you know, there, there's what you give and there's, there's what comes back to you. And then as us, us as a community, how we've evolved and how we help each other out and stay the course. So Dream Catchers, thank you for watching uh, this segment with uh, entrepreneur and self-empowerment advocate Marcus Johnson. We will have him back as soon as we can schedule ourselves <laughs> on his very busy schedule. Um, continue to uh, check us out on our YouTube channel. And as always, until next time, catch fire on purpose. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. It's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys mm -hmm. know statistically friendly kids have more friends? Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Getting that college education? What are you gonna do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else? Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts? Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you gonna make of yourself? What are you gonna make of me?